Welcome to the official Autodesk Inventor podcast. My name is Garen Gardner. I'm the technical marketing manager for Autodesk Inventor. Today is Friday the 29th. That's June, Friday the 29th. And this is episode number 13. For our first video podcast, I've been watching the news groups a little bit, and I've seen a couple of people ask questions about how to create new punches with uh, the new sheet metal capabilities. So I wanted to go over some of the new punch tools with sheet metal. So in here, before before I jump into the actual punch, let's take a look at the setup that I've I've set up here. You'll notice that I have a sketch, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but I've got a sketch that's kind of overlaying the, the feature that I want to create as a punch. And I'm going to turn that off for right now. I'll just turn the visibility off. You'll notice that I also have, underneath the, the actual uh, cut, I have a sketch, and I have a whole center, or a center point there. So I need to, I, in my initial sketch, I need to have a center point and then create the feature that I want to eventually roll into a, a punch. And then for sheet metal, we can actually take advantage of additional sketches. So I'm going to turn on that additional sketch. I don't necessarily need to have it visible, but just for display purposes for us to see what's going on, I'll turn that on. So let's go over to our tools pull down. You'll notice that I have my extract eye feature. So this is the same as we've used in the past. If you created eye features in the past, it's the same tool, but it has been redesigned. You'll notice that I have standard eye feature and then I have the sheet metal punch eye feature. So it's all rolled into one feature. And the difference, you'll notice if I click on sheet metal, that it activates my manufacturing information down here. So this is extremely helpful when we start creating our drawings to get some of our information. Um, but also in the creation process of this. So let's pull this out of the way a little bit and we'll take a look at the feature that we want to create a punch from. I can select it. You'll notice that it populates a lot of my information in here. So it tells it what sketch it's using and I can give it information as far as a prompt and it has the, the thickness value here. It's using the parameter thickness and it shows me what its value is. I can also come in here and specify what the punch name is going to be and I'm just going to name it Vent. We'll do something like Vent B. And then we also want to specify a sketch. Now I don't have to do this, but later on when I create a flat pattern, if we want a simplified representation, this step is, a, is the step that I need to go through to get that. So I'm going to select a sketch for my, my uh, alternate representation. And you'll notice that I can come in and select that sketch that I turned off earlier. So we'll just select it. We can see that it's now going to be consumed by that and we'll save this off. And for this example, I don't really have a special catalog right now set up for Inventor, so I'm just going to use the default catalog and we'll come into the punches and I'm going to name this Vent B. So the name really isn't important, this is just in allowing you to find and use whatever punches you want. So now once we've done that, we want to be able to use this in here. So I'm just going to roll my end of part marker up above this uh, this eye feature or uh, yeah, the, the sheet metal eye feature that we just created. And I'm going to create a new sketch because we want to be able to have a center point to, to link this to. And we'll just come in here and find about the center of that, that extrusion and, and place a whole center right there. So at this point now we can come in and tell it that we want to insert in an eye feature. In fact, I can find instead of an eye feature, we want to use punch from our sheet metal tools. So you'll notice down here about halfway down I have the punch tool and we'll activate that. You'll notice that it's defaulting me to my punches, the same punches location, the default one, and we'll specify that we're going to use the vent B. And then I can get some information in here as far as, you know, the geometry and the size if we've built in any additional information as far as if we want to change the angle and if I had any size information. Right now we'll just finish this off and we'll see that it created in place. So not too much different than creating a standard punch, but now we want to be able to see the fruit of our labors with actually creating a flat pattern and seeing what we can do with this particular punch. So let's go to our flat pattern. We'll just activate it. You can see here that I have the punch. This is just as we would see in the past that it's showing extrusions in my flat pattern. But what if I wanted to see the simplified representation in my flat pattern? So when I created my drawings, maybe, or when I sent this off to manufacturing, maybe I wanted a symbol or just the outline of this particular punch. I didn't necessarily want to see all the cutouts. So what I can do, a new way to get into some of these options is just go to a, an area where you're not over the part at all, right click, and you'll notice that you can edit flat pattern definition. 
In the past, you could do this by right-clicking on the flat pattern in the browser, but we've now added it over here. So with that, you'll notice that I have my flat pattern information. I can change the alignment. I can change the base face. But underneath punch representation, we can see that I have a couple of different things. And let's just pan this up a little bit. I have my default form punch feature. And then I also have the ability to do 2D sketch representation or 2D with the center mark. And I'm going to have it show the center mark as well. So I'm going to show the 2D sketch rep and center mark and we'll hit OK. So what we're going to see here is it's actually going to use that initial sketch that we put into the punch and we can see see it right there. Now the great thing when we go when we go into a, a drawing and create a drawing and actually pull out the uh, the punch information we'll be able to see all the inform all of this regardless if we've done it as a formed punch or a uh, simplified representation of a punch. So let's go over and do that real quick. Let's come back to our, our folded model, which I typically do before I go into creating a sheet metal part. And we're just going to create a drawing. So I have my drawing set as a default to a DWG just because I like working off of a DWG file. It allows me through the, the DWG True Connect to automatically open these in AutoCAD if I choose. But with this, we just want to create a new view. So we'll specify here, it's a little bit larger dialog than my window, but we can see we can specify a flat pattern. And I also want to recover punch center, and that's an important aspect if I want to be able to see the whole center and pull some punch information off of this. So we want to be able to recover that, and then let's change this scale to be a little bit larger, something like that. So in here we now see that we have the simplified representation in the center mark. So I'm not showing the formed punch. Now if I went back and changed the option to show a form punch, this would update and I would see it as well. So either way it works for you. Um, so now from here a couple of the new things that we've added is the ability to actually have the punch data. So you'll notice that if I go to the table, the, the new this is a new table feature that we added in Inventor 11. I can select the sheet metal part and it's pulling all of the bend information from here. So we can just over on the right side we'll just place my my bend information so now we can see here that it's showing all of the the bend direction these are for the flan all of the flanges that I've created but now if I want to be able to put the punch information we'll come in with our regular hole uh, we'll specify it with our our uh, our whole table and I'm going to select the whole table and view and I'm just going to specify where I want the center point to be and I'll just grab the intersection there. Now this next part when I create my whole table we're going to place it here and this may take a couple of steps. I typically save this in my style library but I'm going to edit the whole table and we're going to specify for this whole table that instead of holes we want punches. So you'll notice that I can select the punch information and we'll apply that. So now, and I, I could go in and format this a little bit more to specify what I want to see in here, and I probably would take the description off, but now I can see where all of my punch information is located. So the table allows us to get flange fold information, and then the, the whole table allows us to go in and specify that we want, uh, we want punch information. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I create, in my styles, I create a, a separate uh, a separate item or a separate, a separate style that is specifically for punches. So what that allows me to do, let's extend this a little bit, is when I create one of these, I have an option now to drop down. You can see here I have the option to drop down and select a punch table. So if we select this and go to a punch table, we'll notice that I have it specifically formatted to give me just the information that I want. So this is something that, uh, in fact, I believe it might be in the default template as well. You can do some customization on it and really modify how you want that. So when you're initially creating that, and we'll do this uh, one more time, uh, when we're initially creating, let's just pan this over, that hole, the uh, hole table, and placing the center, I can actually specify over here that we're going to use the punch table instead of the hole table. 
and that will automatically bring up the formatting for me. So there are a couple of quick tips on being able to create your punches, having alternate representations in them, and then being able to pull the punch table from it as well as your bend table. So with that, we'll probably a little bit later do some, some uh, tips and tricks on being able to create uh, features in the flat pattern. And if you found this beneficial, definitely uh, at the, the bottom of the show notes, you'll get there's our email address. Please email me and let me know that uh, maybe tips that you would like in the future and things that you would like to see uh, at some point down the road. So thank you, and we'll talk to you next time.